What is going on guys? Cloud Envy here. Fun fact, I accidentally deleted the entire last recording, so we're gonna do it again. Awesome. Okay. So we are playing Toga War for our week five. Coach of the Arizona Carvanas. This is season six of the MPL. I said that all out of order. I did it last time too. I don't know what's going on, man. My head is just all over the place, but <clears throat> let's get through some really quick team prep here. Um as you can see, he has Venusaur. That's a Mega Venusaur. That's a Mega, not a regular. It's a Mega, so it's it's a lot scarier than it actually seems. Uh, Clefable, which really just tears me up if it sets up. I hate Clefables so much. I didn't even realize how much I hated Clefables until I started watching Togue's battles. So mm. he got a nice Thundy, nice Thundy. I I'm pretty cool with Thundy. Star Raptor. I'm expecting either a Band or a Scarf set. Bronzong is a pain for my team to get through. It really is. And Tentacruel, probably a spinner, probably bulky. So, let's get into our squad right quick. We got the Dr. Celebi uh, coming in here with a pretty bulky set. 248 HP, 156 defense with a nice bold nature, and 104 spec Now, we are bringing Signal Beam, Psychic, Recover, and Heal Bell. Now, this is a weird Celebi, really weird Celebi. Basically, we want to bait in the Weavile by spamming Psychics. So, Weavile comes in, does all this stuff. If we can predict it, we utilize our Buginium Z, hit it with a nice... I don't remember what the Z move is called. Super powerful signal beat. Bam. If we don't predict it well enough, well, then we have enough bulk to live a hit from Weavile and KO it right there. Because Weavile does some pretty nasty stuff to this team. Sort of. I mean, I have an Arcanine and I have a Fortress. It does okay damage. <laughs> Either way, I don't want it to be cleaning me up. Next, we have Taros the Tauros, a nice life orb, nice sheet of force. We've got Iron Head, Zen Head, but Retaliate and Earthquake. Iron Head is here for the obvious Clef Fable. I don't want that thing to do stuff. I don't want it to happen. Zen Head, but for that nice Venusaur. Earthquake for the Bronzong and the Tentacruel. And Retaliate for any kind of po possible revenge killing at all whatsoever. Because... If I bring this thing on in a revenge aspect, we will KO almost anything with Retaliate. <clears throat> Especially since Tauros outspeeds a lot of uh, his main squads. We've got 72 in HP, 252 attack, 4 defense, and 180 in speed with a jolly nature. After that, we've got B-I-N-G-O, the Arcan 9, Rock and Rocky Helmet. Nice Intimidate ability. And we went way out of our comfort zone here. Brought a pretty bulky set. 248 in HP. 8 in attack. 252 in defense with an impish nature. I know, right? I'm so used to offensive Arcanine. I love offensive Arcanine. But we had to change it up this week. This week, we had to change it up. Uh, we have Morning Sun, Flare Blitz, Will-O-Wisp, and Extreme Speed. Just to pick off those faster threats. And, you know, just wall stuff. Again, possibly for Weavile. Um... If he is banded Star Raptor, we don't completely live, but we can live a hit and E speed back or predict the switch and heal up with Morning Sun, and I'm okay with that. Next up, we got Shocky Doge. A nice choice banded set, I know. Bear with me, bear with me. Uh, we have Lightning Rods with Switcheroo, Volt Switch, Hidden Power Grass, and Snarl. I know it's weird, right? Um, 32 in HP. 252 special attack and 224 in speed with a timid nature. Now, Shocky Doge is really just here to disrupt this team. Looking at a squad, Mega Venusaur cannot hold an item that isn't Mega Venusaur right. Uh, Clef does not want a band. Thunny does not want a band. Star Raptor probably either has a band or a scarf, which really is going to balance us out a little bit. Bronzong doesn't want a band, and Tentacruel, I guess, doesn't want a band unless he wants to deal some extra damage with Rapid Anyway. Manectric is really here because we have Volt Switch. Obviously, yes, Thundee has Volt Absorb, but the Thundee Switch into Manectric is a little obvious, as Hidden Power Ice could be there, and I don't think he'd want to take that. Instead, I feel like he would probably have Clef as a switch in for Manectric, <clears throat> considering he can bulk a hit pretty well, get up a free Cosmic Power, and then just set up from there. I really want to predict the switch into that. And just give him a nice band. I don't want him to already be setting up because of the chance the band may not matter at that point. 
So it's really going to depend on the Switch. But, yeah. Regardless, whatever we hit is going to be beneficial. So, pluses. Next up, we got Stabby the Mega Beedrill. Yes, it's a Mega Beedrill. I'm not bringing a regular Beedrill to an NPL match. That'd be stupid. So we've got Swarm. Well, actually, it's adaptability, so it's cool. Like, we're cool. Uh, poison Jab, U-Turn, Drill Run, and Knock Off. Again, hits almost everything on this team really hard. Um, even Mega Venusaur doesn't want to take a Poison Jab or a U-Turn. Clef doesn't want to take a Poison Jab. Thunny doesn't want to take a Poison Jab. You know, you, you know I'm getting that. Staraptor doesn't want to take a Poison Jab. Bronzong, uh, depending if it's a type of Berry slash Levitate ability, we have Knock Off or Drill Run with it. And Tentacruel can take a Drill Run, but it's not going to want to. But Stabby's got a pretty bulky set here. We got 104 in HP, 252 in attack with a nice Adam in nature, 124 in spadef, and 28 speed because Mega Beedro is just that fast. Love this thing. Last but not least, we have Bruce Willis, the Unbreakable Fortress. This guy is crazy. We got a Cuss Tap Berry. Nice sturdy ability. One of these days I'm going to bring Overcoat. I'm just waiting for the week to do it. Uh, we do have Rapid Spin, Explosion, Stealth Rock, and Pain Split for that sustenance. Now, we got 248 in HP, 8 in Defense, and 252 in Spadef with a nice sassy nature. We had a sassy Bruce Willis this week. Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't really remember why I brought a sassy Spadef Fortress. I'm pretty sure there was a reason behind it, but whatever. I was actually really close to bringing a... Um, Offensive Fortress, either Bandit or Expert Belt, considering it really, really kind of hits this team super hard between Heavy Slam, Bug Bite, Earthquake, and I forgot the last move, Rock Slide. But we decided against it, and that's the team. I've rambled on long enough. I mean, I don't want to bore you guys and be talking this much. Like, like, let's get to the battle, right? Come on. I feel you. Okay, we're going to jump into this. <clears throat> I'm going to play it on normal, not fast, because I hate having to stop the video and redo it. Play music off. All right. We're going to start with Shocky Doge as he goes into that thing, the Bronzong. Now, I fucked up already. Turn one, I fucked up. I thought he was going to switch. Um, realist it was much more realistic that he set up rocks, but I thought he was going to switch, so I gave it a choice band. Took the Culpa Berry, so at least we were right about that prediction. He does get his rocks off. I didn't want to Volt Switch now because I felt like Thundee again. Now, there's the fucking Clef. I hate this thing. Um, Clef comes out on our Doctor. <clears throat> so we're going to get right back out. I don't want to let him step on this thing. We're going to Taros. Now, he's going to double out into Star Raptor as Taros cannot take a banded Brave Bird. I don't want that to happen. He's going to go for a U turn, which is a great play on his part. Uh, hits Fortress a little bit. This Mega Venusaur comes in, and I'm expecting HP Fire. There's the HP Fire, and it was a crit. Okay, this is where it matters, <laughs> because he did get a crit there. And with our investment, if he was a defensive Mega Venusaur, we would have lived that HP Fire. If he was an offensive Mega Venusaur, we would not have lived that HP Fire. Therefore, that crit... Scared me, because either which way, the crit was killing it. I had no idea what kind of Mega Venus were I was up against. So we sat and just kind of... For like... The whole minute. So, a Celebi comes in. I know we can probably eat a Sludge Bomb. Uh, he switches out. Goes back into Bronzong. As we would just recover up. I just Again, I wanted to base what kind of damage he was going to deal. So he goes back into the Star Raptor. This thing. Uh, to eat a Psychic, nonetheless. So after E is Psychic, and we switch out. At this point, I'm expecting Choice Band and another U-Turn. I'm sorry, Choice Scarf and another U-Turn. So he hits that U-Turn, we hit that Rocky Helmet, and then bam, 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 damage is exchanged. Mega Venus coming back out. We're going to heal up, because, I, again, I don't know what this thing wants to do. He misses a lead Seed, which really kind of sucks for him, as we predict a switch and go for a Will-O-Wisp here. Uh, Sludge Bomb does some pretty good damage, and he gets the Poison, so, oh my god, this is... Not looking good for us at all so far. But we do heal back up. At this point, I feel like it's a losing battle because between Sludge Bomb and the Poison, we're going to have the Morning Sun every turn. And Arcanine doesn't want that. So we're going to Morning Sun up again, hoping he breaks me to switch out. As he goes to the Lead Seed, which is good for us. It's good for us. 
because we're going to get out of there. He's revealed uh, three of his moves so far, which forces me to assume he may be an uh, yeah, offensive being store. Another crit, which sucks because um, that really sucks. Celebi could have done more damage if not for the crit there. Um, we could have gotten a Psychic off, but instead I had to use the Recover. Sludge Bomb's coming our way again. I'm really just trying to wait for the burn damage to drop low enough so we can hit it with a nice hard Psychic. Uh, Clefable's coming out again. Eating this Psychic, doing 27%. I don't want this to happen. We're going to switch out into Taros, which was a giant misplay off the bat. He sets up a Cosmic Power here. Um, I really... We hit him with an Iron Head. I really should have gone into Beedrill. There was no reason for me to got for me to not go into Beedrill. Uh, we're just we're spamming Iron Head now because at this rate I'm thinking okay Iron Head did a really decent amount of damage. If I can just get a crit, if I can just get a crit Iron Head, we got this. He gotten two crits. Where's our crit? And I'm just I'm sitting here praying, just praying for a critical hit. As much as I hate to hope for hacks in a match. As much as he's setting up, it really seemed like our only real play. Uh, Mega Beedrill really was what I should have gone into, considering I don't know what Bronzong was at. I think Bronzong was at 100%. But Mega Beedrill was what I should have gone into instead of Taros. Uh, I didn't want to predict wrong and switch into a Psychic here. Um, he does reveal he also has Charge Beam, which also isn't really helping our cause. <laughs> at all! So, as you can see... This is the majority of the game, just ramming our face into a marshmallow. And that's made very apparent by the fact that I can take a drink and not miss any narration. <laughs> but <clears throat> he does fire off the sword power here. Tauros does go down, which is really unfortunate for us. In comes Stabby. Again, I'm just praying for the crit. I know we can't kill this thing right now. So, Poison he eats a Kevia Berry, which shows me that even if I had switched into Beedrill, it would not have actually mattered, because Toad's a really smart guy. Really smart guy. He knew that Mega Beedrill was going to be just just stabbing that Clefable right in its soft, pink little body. So, drop the Kevia Berry, uh, Berry on it, so Beedrill's jab really didn't matter all that much. Um... I'm honestly surprised it did not kill Arcanine. We have no Spindef investment, but unfortunately, Arcanine is going to fall here to itself. Really, just just a little bit of solace for Ah Clefable didn't technically six o me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Clefable didn't technically get five kills here because Arcanine killed itself. Ah. You know, one of those deals. But another another unnecessary crit as Minector just gets annihilated. Oh, that poor dog. But we are going to just take a chance here. Again, I hope for the crit and use Savage Spin Out, which does nothing. <laughs> but Celebi does drop, and that's going to give Toke a very, very nice 6-0 victory. A great game, man. Your prep was just on point. Um, To be perfectly honest, going into this game, like I like to watch all of my opponent's league matches as much as possible before I battle them, before I prep for them. And as I'm watching his games, I'm thinking, oh my god, I can't outplay this guy. Like, Toga is too smart. He's too smart. Uh, he know he's way... He's extremely comfortable with his mons. I am not as much. But, <clears throat> it was a fun game regardless. It was a little upsetting to see Clef just run train on my team. But, either way, you know, it's a game. It's Pokemon. What are you gonna do? But, Toke, again, great game, my man. Please go down in the description. Check that guy out. He's a really talented battler. Really good guy. But stay tuned because next week we are going to be battling Trev, coach of the... How did I forget? I am horrible. Atlanta Braviaries. I've been in, like, three different leagues with this guy, and I still can't get the name. I suck. Like, that's it. I suck. But <laughs> next week we are going to be battling Trev, so stay tuned for that. But until then, guys... Stay frosty.